The automotive sector has been undergoing a significant shift towards environmental responsibility in recent years. A notable trend is the commitment of major automakers to transition exclusively to electric vehicles by 2030. However, amidst this transition, militaries worldwide still stand out as significant contributors to global emissions. So, is there a feasible way for the progress in EV technology to extend to military vehicles? Let's find out together. The United States has the world's largest military, an institution that surpasses all others in scale, but also maintains a carbon footprint greater than any other global entity. In fact, the emissions from the US military exceed those of entire industrialized nations, such as Portugal or Sweden. Addressing this environmental challenge, President Biden signed an executive order back in December 2021, mandating the adoption of light-duty electric vehicles by 2027 and extending to include medium to heavy-duty electric vehicles by 2035. Although this directive applies only to non-combat vehicles used for transportation within military installations, it could still shape the future environmental stance of the U.S. military. To understand better, Let's look at some numbers. The U.S. military is the largest institutional consumer of petroleum fuels, consuming up to 4.2 billion gallons per year, which cost over $9 billion in 2019. Despite reduced expenditures during the pandemic, Congress allocated an additional $3 billion in 2022 due to increased fuel costs. Ongoing global conflicts and reduced oil production commitments by OPEC maintain high fuel prices. But beyond financial costs, the military pays in lives too. In fact, one out of every eight casualties in Iraq from 2003 to 2007 was linked to protecting fuel convoys. This dependence poses security risks, making convoys susceptible to attacks. As part of the executive order, the U.S. Army is leading the way in electric and hybrid vehicle pilot programs. The Army's climate strategy aims for an all-electric light-duty fleet by 2027 and a full electric fleet, including hybrid tactical vehicles, by 2035. Oshkosh Defense and GM have demonstrated hybrid and electric military vehicles, while BAE Systems is developing a hybrid Bradley Infantry fighting vehicle too. The Marine Corps, specializing in expeditionary operations, is at a higher risk of fuel supply issues. Making sure logistics, especially fuel, is well managed is crucial for marine operations. With Chinese military threats aiming at U.S. logistics vessels, the Marine Corps must cut down its reliance on fuel. Now, let's take a look at potential advantages and disadvantages that electric military vehicles could bring to the battlefield in the future. Apart from being environmentally friendly, electric vehicles offer a stealthy advantage on the battlefield due to their whisper-quiet operation, enhancing stealth, especially at night. In addition to a lower thermal signature, electric vehicles can power mission-critical equipment efficiently. Their simpler propulsion system with fewer moving parts enhances reliability, reducing the risk of breakdowns and ensuring military vehicles remain effective in the field. Now, let's consider some drawbacks of electric military vehicles. Despite technological advancements in recent years, the limited range of EVs remains a concern, posing potential risks on the battlefield where running out of power could be a fatal error. Weight is a significant challenge for EV efficiency in military vehicles, especially those requiring added armor for troop safety and mounted weaponry for covering fire. Unlike gas-powered vehicles that refuel instantly, even with the fastest available charging stations, the battery packs needed for some military EVs take hours to charge fully. For instance, the GMC Hummer EV's 212 kWh battery pack takes about two and a half hours to charge. GM Defense acknowledges the Department of Defense's gradual transition to electric technology, suggesting a potential interim step involving hybrid powertrains before a full commitment to electric-only military vehicles. Cost is another concern, with electric technology maintaining higher prices compared to internal combustion vehicles, even with government incentives. 
The evolving nature of electric vehicle technology keeps manufacturers engaged in constant innovation, driving costs higher. While the average total cost of an EV battery has dropped significantly, the industry's pursuit of improved range, acceleration, charging speed, and weight reduction contributes to sustained high prices. So, the military's logical progression could involve embracing hybrid technology, utilizing electric motors alongside internal combustion engines to enhance efficiency. This approach would enable military installations to test charging infrastructure viability, whether with a plug-in hybrid platform or other options. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this video interesting, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest defense news and analyses.